Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Amber. This is my channel. Today we're going to talk about some beginner tips in Darktable, specifically how to get your photos into Darktable by importing them, and then how to get them back out once you're done editing them as a JPEG or a PNG or whatever kind of file you need. This is the very first episode in a series of beginner tutorial videos that are just going to walk through really basic concepts in Darktable because those are the things I struggle with the most when I was first starting out. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is open Darktable. All right, when you first open Darktable, it's going to look kind of like this, a little scary. There is nothing here to look at because obviously I haven't imported anything yet. And it's going to say there's no images. You haven't imported anything. If you want to, you can do so in the import module. So believe it or not, um, it's not super <laughs> intuitive. I mean, I know you come to import, but what you do from there, I wasn't really sure when I first started. So I wanted to make this just so that you guys can see it's, it is really easy. Um, as long as you kind of know what you're doing, I'm clicking this little arrow up here so that you can see, um, the difference. There's two sections of dark table. There is the light table, which is where you're going to do your importing, exporting, and then like global actions that you're going to want to do for more than one photo. And then you have the darkroom section, which is actually where you're going to do your editing. Um, for today, we're going to be working just in light table because this is only about importing and exporting your images. So first thing you're going to do is come over here to the import section and you can click this little arrow. And then you have three options, image, folder, or scan for devices. This is basically asking where do I want to pull photos from to put them in a dark table. Now, I came from Lightroom. This does not work like Lightroom where you're going to hit scan for devices, find your camera that's attached to your computer, and then it'll just pull your photos off and save a copy of them onto your hard drive. doesn't do that. You have to have the photos already on your hard drive saved. My understanding could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I'll gladly take any help I can get because I was looking for a long time for help on this one. Um, but scan for devices is going to find stuff like a memory card reader that is attached to your computer. It's going to find your camera if you're trying to like tether your camera to your computer, um, which you would do if you were maybe in like a studio setting and you wanted to view your photos live while you're taking the photos. Um, but I don't have a memory card reader. And if you want to see a walkthrough of that, I can link it down in the description below. We're not going to go over that piece today. I'm just going to give you a fast way to get them off of your hard drive. Okay. So you can either click image if you just want a few images or folder if you want to import a whole folder together all at one time. So today I'm going to do, I'll show you both, but let's get the photos off of my camera first. So here's the camera I use. I've already got my little cord plugged into the camera itself and I'm going to plug it into my computer like you normally would. And then I'm going to turn my camera on. There it goes. Okay. So I'm going to pull photos off of one of these cards. It doesn't matter. I have two cards in my camera. Um, my camera has a dual memory card slot, so you can choose from either memory card. I have both of these in my camera and I shoot on both of them. I'm going to pick the SD and I just open these folders until I get to the folder with the photos that I want to pull over into dark table. Okay. Obviously I know that one's trash, so I'm not going to take that one, but these starting from here all the way to the end, I'm just going to hold down my shift key and select all of them. And then I'm going to right click and hit copy. Okay. You can also like click these once you have them selected and then just hover over whatever folder you want to put them in and then let go and it's going to drop them there. But I don't have that folder put up, pulled up right here. So, Okay, this is the folder I'm going to put my photos in. So I would right click and then hit paste. All right. You can see I have actually already pulled these into this folder because it took them forever to load. So I didn't want you guys to sit and watch me do that, but I pasted them all into here and now I can pull them over into Darktable. So once you have your photos on your hard drive like this, um, you can come back to Darktable and choose one of these options up here at the top. So either image or folder. If I pick image, it's going to pull up the same um, box either way. So you can pick image 
and then I can just select like one image or two images to pull over and I would hit open and it'll pull them in or I can select folder and it will choose an entire folder and pull all of those images in at once. So I'm going to actually, I don't have these photos in Darktable yet, I just had them on my computer. So I'm gonna actually pull them into Darktable and I'll show you what it looks like and kind of what I would wanna do with them before I pull them in. Let's say I went here to this 20 photography pictures and then the folder under it for 2020. I have some pictures that are just in this folder by themselves but I also have subfolders in here. Each of these subfolders also has pictures in it. So there's two options here. If I wanted to just pull these three photos and not any of these subfolders, I wanna make sure that this option right here, import folders recursively, is unchecked, okay? If I have this checked, what Darktable is gonna do is pull these three photos that are in this 2020 folder by themselves then it's also gonna check each of these subfolders to see if there's photos in there and import those as well. So if I wanted to import everything in 2020, including all the subfolders, I would make sure this import folders recursively is checked. If I don't want anything from those subfolders, I want this unchecked and it'll just pull in those three images, okay? Now you also have two other options down here to ignore JPEG files. You can do this if you shoot in RAW and JPEG together and your folder where you just imported the photos has both RAW and JPEG files. Obviously in Darktable it's going to be a lot easier and better to manipulate a RAW file because you have more data there to work with. Um, if you for some reason wanted JPEGs and RAW files together imported, leave that ignore JPEG files unchecked. You can also leave ignore JPEG files unchecked if you don't shoot in JPEG and there's none to bother with. So that's fine. I don't shoot in JPEG, I only shoot raw, so I'm just gonna leave it unchecked. And then the last option down here is to apply metadata on import. Now you can set up these options here with a title, a description, your name as the creator or photographer, and then any rights that you wanna give your photos and all of this metadata will be written to these files as they're imported into Darktable. So if I have photos that I'm going to put on a website somewhere and I want them to be marked with like a Creative Commons license so other people can use them and edit those photos however they want, you can click here under this preset with this dropdown and you can click which one of these you want to have applied to your photos. So you can click all rights reserved if you wanna make sure that these photos are yours and no one else has rights to touch them, you can do some kind of a Creative Commons license and you have different options here. You can click on those and see what your options are. For now, I'm gonna leave mine blank because I'm just using these photos for myself personally. They're not going on the internet anywhere. So I'm gonna leave that off and I'm gonna to come to the folder that I wanted to import, which is this 2020 dance recital. Double clicked it to open it. You can see I've got it selected up here at the top and then I'm just gonna hit open. Now it's gonna take it a minute to import all of these photos because there were quite a few. So anyways, we're gonna worry about editing these photos later. I'm not doing anything with these right now. I just wanted to show you guys to import. You can use image, select one or two, or you can do folder and select a whole folder and Darktable will put them all in at the same time, okay? Now, there will be another video coming up where we're gonna talk about collections and how to sort your photos in Darktable, how I personally go through a photo session and choose which photos are keepers, which ones are not, and we'll go through all that later, so keep an eye out for that video coming soon. But for now, we're just gonna talk about exporting these photos back out to a JPEG or a PNG file or whatever you want it to be. So once I have my photos, let's say I want to export these two photos because I like them and I've edited them and they look how I want them to look. For that, I'm going to still be in this light table module, but I'm going to come over here to this side on the right hand side and I'm going to come down to export selected. You can click the little triangle and it'll give you a bunch of options down here. I'm not gonna go through all these in depth today. This is a quick tutorial just to show you how to get your stuff out because I know when you're in a pinch, time is of the essence. So to export your photos, there's two things that you wanna know. First thing is right here, Darktable is gonna kinda pick 
a folder that it wants to put your stuff back into and it is going to be the same folder that was used last time. This isn't going to change automatically and there's not an option in Darktable as of right now that I know of. If you know, tell me in the comments and I'll love you forever. Um, but there's not an option right now that will export your photos back to the same folder that they were imported from. Um, that was one feature I used a lot in Lightroom and I do miss that. But I was having some trouble when I went to export my photos forgetting to change what file or what folder I wanted them to be put into. And I had all kinds of client photos from two or three sessions that were getting exported to the folder of the client before. So what I did, I actually came here and made myself a folder. Let me find it. That just says Darktable exports. And I actually put all of my exported images that I've edited in Darktable back in the Darktable exports folder. So if I'm in a pinch and I need to find, oh crap, what did I edit? It's gonna be in this folder for me. That helps me keep where I'm putting stuff straight and I'm not hunting around trying to figure out what the crap I did with something. But the other thing that I want to point out here is that you do have an option to set presets. So up here in the upper right hand corner of the export module is a thing called presets and I can get all of these settings here exactly how I want them and then I can save that as a new preset just by clicking store new preset and it's going to remember the file path and the quality that I wanted, the resizing options. It's gonna save all of these things as a preset. So I can have one preset for Instagram photos and I could make this a preset for just general DT exports, let's name it. And I'm gonna hit okay. And the next few times that I export photos, if I use this preset, you can see here it is right there, General DT Exports, and it's at the top and it's in kind of bold because it's the one I'm using. Um, but it's going to export my photos to this Darktable Exports folder. It's going to do it at, at the quality level of 95. It's going to do it at 8-bit JPEG, and it's not going to resize. Okay? Now, if one note about resizing down here. If you don't put anything in these boxes for resizing, Darktable is going to export these photos at the same size you imported them. So if you save every photo you've ever taken, this is going to add up really quickly and start taking up a lot of room. So just kind of be aware of that. All right, so I've got my two that I want to export. And I'm just going to hit export down here at the bottom. It's going to export those two photos as JPEGs. It's giving me a nice little notice down here that it has exported one out of two. And in a minute, it'll tell me it's exported two of two. There we go. So now both of my photos are exported. I can go back to that folder on my computer and I can pull them up. Let's see if I can find that. There's my dark table exports and here they are right here. Awesome. So that is just about all for importing and exporting your photos. It's easier than it seems, but this should get you started. All right, guys, that's all I got for you guys right now. That is how to get your photos imported and exported from Darktable, just a quick little tutorial. So if you like this video or it helped, give me a thumbs up, please, down below, subscribe to my channel. That would help me out so much. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get notified when more videos like this come back out. So you guys have a good afternoon. I'll see you later.